Hi everyone, this is Mihai with Pro Tools Training. Today I've got Mike Bernard, live music editor and Pro Tools engineer on NBC's hit show The Voice with me today. So tell us a little bit about yourself and the journey that you took to get here where we are today. I started back in uh, late 70s, early 80s um, as uh, actually working in studios as a synthesizer programmer. In the late 80s into early 90s, um, uh, I was uh, working with Brian Wilson, did his first two records. Actually, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, From the Beach correct? Boys, yeah. I spoke to them on the phone, and um, uh, they said, uh, they go, um, you know, you, do you like the Beach Boys? And I said, oh, I was never really a fan. And they said, great, come on down. With him, I, I, I walked in the room, and I had the, um, an old Sequential Circuits Prophet 2000 sampler, and he looked at it, he goes, what, what kind of sounds does this do? I said, anything you want. And he goes, well... Um, can it make the sound of a nuclear explosion? And I went, yeah. <laughs> that uh, war, that went on to about like five years of working with him, pretty much one on one in the studio. I mean, we did. I think at one point the longest run was eight months, just the two of us. One of the uh, the original things I was working on was with uh, a friend of mine who, had, who was playing keyboards with David Lee Roth and. Um, uh, so I'd, I was helping him as far as uh, with the MIDI setup that he was using and what would be the best way to put it together. And this kind of went in through the early 90s to the late 90s when I had a, um, um, a friend of mine who was basically he was he would, did the same thing I did. He he called me up one day and he said, um, hey, uh. I'm going to do this tour with Cher. I don't want to do it. You want to do it? <laughs> anyway, so that was that was my first meeting with uh, Paul Merkovich, who is the MD on, on The Voice. So MD, we, uh, just to, to clarify for everybody out there, MD is a musical director. Yeah. When that tour finished, um, I got a call through some other people I was working with to work with Christina Aguilera. Okay, so after the tour work that you did with Cher and Christina Aguilera and artists right. such as that. Um, what what happened in your life beyond that point? The last tour I finished up with uh, was with Pink, and uh, she was a, actually a good artist to work for. I, I was sort of reunited working with Paul on that one. He called me up and said, what are you doing? And I said, uh, nothing. He goes, I'm working on this show called The Voice. He goes, um, you want to come in and you know, I need you to do some Pro Tools work for me. We got together and with the band and um, and the you know had to go over. I think the first set of songs was like a hundred and seventy songs wow. that the band had to learn. We've learned over a thousand songs. Wow! Recorded about five hundred songs for iTunes. Um, and this is in two years. It's amazing. So. That's that's fifty albums worth of material in two years. So you and I first met when Paul called us at Pro Media, asking us to come out here and spend a little bit of time with you and uh, and just kind of go over some things with Pro Tools. And one of the things, like when Paul called you in um, to for me to talk, he goes, "Oh, talk to this guy, Mihai. See if there's anything that you know that he he can show you for your workflow." Changing pitch wasn't the problem. It was changing time with Elastic Audio, and that was I was completely overlooking that and just going, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember yeah. that was something that we we did spend quite a bit of time on right. that that day was was going over all the aspects of Elastic Audio. Right. Because it, it seemed from what you told me then that that was a really integral part of what you do on the show. Yeah. You guys obviously do a lot of Pro Tools work on, on the show. Yeah. What are some of the, the challenges that, that you guys encounter every single day in, in your day-to-day -day work? I would say that the main challenge is, is the speed, I think, that we do everything at. There's things where we are going through maybe 24 songs in a day mm -hmm. with contestants, and those songs are recorded um, and we have a separate separate stereo music pass along with a vocal from the contestant and all of this has to be bounced down and sent to you know and converted to an mp3 and sent to them via email so that way they can get it by the time they walk out of the room when they're done it's already being sent to them so they can walk in with a vocal coach and start rehearsing it literally you know a half hour later 
in the context of the show. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Pro Tools is pretty widely used. And I think for most people that have watched the show, you can even see that they also use other components such as the uh, Avid Venue system for the live rehearsals. Um, do you guys actually record most of that stuff that happens through the rehearsal process when they're working with the, with the mentors or, or whatnot? Well, what we've got is we have a, uh, a venue, and that's our monitor desk. Um, I've got, I'm playing back and recording, and then I've also got, like I said, another guy that's actually recording to convert for the contestants. Um, and I'm sort of recording everything as, as more of an archival thing because I, every time we run the song down, I'm recording a pass of it. So if someone does something and we need to go back and say, oh, wait, what did we do on this? Um, just because of the volume of songs that we're doing. In our, in our truck for the show, it's actually the show is mixed on another venue in, the show, in, in a remote truck along with a Pro Tools HD system in there as well. Now, is the, the live show, when you guys get to the live portion, is that being recorded yes. as it's being mixed? Yeah, that's being recorded as it's being broadcast. And how does the uh, the iTunes part of it play into into what you guys are doing? Are you guys actually recording like the rehearsals and then piecing songs together? Are you guys going to a recording studio with the contestants? No, they, the, we go into a recording studio. Uh, we've been using a, a studio called the Ocean out in Burbank. And uh, that's been... That's pretty awesome because that place is is what I have here for vintage since they have there for outboard gear. So every every single plugin you can see as far as like vintage plugins, they've got the real thing. So it's actually really nice. It's all done on an old Neve console and all the old all the old compressors and EQs and everything you can imagine in there. And then um, for example, when we get to uh, our battle rounds in the show, we'll have um, We'll have two contestants, and we have to sometimes change, record the song in two different keys because we have to do this before the actual show airs to record these so they're available for download. So we don't know who's going to win. So a lot of times we'll record stuff that just never sees the light of day. So <clears throat> let me ask you, what are some of the most challenging things that you've had to face with working on the show? I think the, uh, the most challenging is um, what to do when a contestant screws up, meaning they lose their place in, uh, in the song. Um, a lot of times it's not that big of a deal. The band just follows them because we're on a click track and that's the only thing is they're hearing is a click. There's a lot of tracks coming from me. I mean, especially if we do something that's like a big you know, electronic dance song we have a you know contestant that came in two bars too late, and um, and all of a sudden you have a chorus coming up where it's going to kick in with twenty four plus tracks of electronic synths and drum sounds and everything else. So there was that that you know I just queued up the backup machine on the DR sixteen and and uh, Paul was we were talking to each other on a headset. I was on a headset. He's on a mic up there, and he's like, "Can you get us in on the chorus?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> just then, in the meantime, I've, I've got both hands trying to cue up one machine, um, switch over to a backup click track that's running, so the band can stay in time, and the chorus comes in and punch in and switch over at the same time, and we are all back in sync. Yeah, so that was a punch in, probably in front of the largest audience I've ever punched in in front of live, which was 12 million people. Wow, that's a lot of so, pressure. Yeah, so that's a little bit of pressure. The it it turns out that all the years of the the live touring has really come into uh, good use on this show. What kind of uh, what kind of advice would you have for people that are looking to get into a, into a work situation like you are, or, or pursue a career path like you're doing? As you're learning, never. I mean, it, even even after you're learning, even after you say, okay, you know, I've got this, never be afraid to ask anybody a question. You're not going to look stupid, you know. It, it just doesn't hurt to always improve on what you know. You don't have to be the fastest person on Pro Tools. It's, I mean, I've worked with guys that sit down and do the speed typing, you know, through the thing. And, um, and while it might look impressive... I, I've seen a lot of people make mistakes just from trying to be too fast. And uh, it just be thorough in, in everything you're doing with it. Uh, always keeping up with what's new 
and um, what's current, as well as analyzing um, older recordings and listening to what people have done and, and, and do a little bit of research on what was used. I think what would be probably good advice for people learning is get your hands on some of the real gear. I mean, you can, you can rent, um, you can rent old gear as far as uh, old compressors and EQs, the vintage stuff, and, and you can rent it pretty at a pretty reasonable price and experiment it, get an idea of what the real thing does and apply that towards the plugin. Well, thank you for all the wonderful, wonderful advice, and, and thank you for the for the time that we spent. It was a real pleasure. Sure, thank you.